Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Welcome back to ASEAN News everyone and here is the latest news. Cambodia detects first case of COVID-19 Omicron variant. The Ministry of Health says Cambodia's residents expressed their worries after the country detected their first case of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus in a local woman who had traveled from Ghana. The ministry says in a statement issues the 23-year-old woman had returned from Ghana via Dubai and Bangkok. The woman, who was 15 weeks pregnant, had been admitted to hospital for treatment. The WHO says the Omicron variant, first detected in South Africa and Hong Kong last month, has now been reported by over 70 countries and is probably present in most worldwide but should not be dismissed as mild. The Southeast Asian nation reopened its borders last month to vaccinated tourists after achieving one of Asia's highest COVID-19 vaccination rates with more than 88% of its 60 million people now inoculated. Indonesia reports for its case of Omicron variant. The country's health minister, Budi Gunadi Sadikin, says Indonesia has identified its first case of the Omicron coronavirus variant. The variant was detected on evening in an employee at the Wisma Athlete Kemayoran, Athlete's Village, which is now serving as a hospital in Jakarta, who had no history of overseas travel. The health minister adds, so far there was no community transmission, but there were more five suspected Omicron cases, including two Indonesians who had recently returned from the United States and from Britain, and three Chinese nationals currently in quarantine in Manado, North Sulawesi. According to the WHO, the Omicron variant, first detected in South Africa and Hong Kong last month, has now been reported by more than 70 countries. Eyewitness says car stuck on flooded road in Malaysia caused by heavy rain. Eyewitness Ashraf Nur Azam, resident from the district of Shah Alam, filmed a clip showing cars trapped in a flooded road. Officials say thousands of people in Malaysia have been displaced by flash floods following non-stop rainfall. The state's chief minister, Amiruddin Shari, in a statement says, in Selangor, the country's wealthy state surrounding capital Kuala Lumpur, more than 3,000 people were evacuated to temporary relief shelters. Amiruddin adds, rainfall in the state had been more than double the previously highest recorded level and flood levels had reached 4.5 meters in affected areas without saying the previous record had been set. The meteorological department warns the heavy rain in Selangor and several states will continue. Myanmar civilians trained to battle military in eastern jungle. At a secret jungle camp in Myanmar's eastern current state, a fitness coach and other civilians are training with armed ethnic guerrillas to fight back against the country's military takeover. Huddled under makeshift tents in remote hills near the Thailand border, these new recruits learn how to load rifles and set detonators from homemade bombs as they prepare to battle the army behind the February 1st coup. A spokesperson for Myanmar's military government did not respond to a request for comment about the group and other civil defense forces around the country. Some recruits say they took up arms because mass demonstration in the wake of coup failed to deter the new rulers who waged a violent crackdown on protests. Uh, Tattoos across his back were the worst freedom to lead and the face of Myanmar's ousted civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi detained group during the coup and convicted this month of incitement in breaching coronavirus restrictions. Training the civilians in the Karen National Union, one of the country's largest ethnic armed groups who expressed solidarity with the protesters and allowed thousands to seek shelters in their territories. One training organizer, a former student activist, says there were more than 100 young civilians in his group training to fight, with new recruits arriving regularly. Rohingya activists in Argentina testifies in a Crimes Against Humanity case. Rohingya activist Maung Tung Hin attends a federal court in Buenos Aires, Argentina to testify in a Crimes Against Humanity case. In November, Argentina's justice system used the principle of universal justice in order to attract the case, which was initiated by Tung Hin in 2019. The Commodore PY Tribunal Court in Buenos Aires is investigating Myanmar's army for human rights violations committed against the Rohingya Muslim minority years ago. 
More than 730,000 Rohingya Muslims fled Myanmar since 2017 after a military-led crackdown which forced them into squalid camps across the border in Bangladesh. The UN has said the crackdown was executed with genocidal intent and included mass killings and rape. Both Tun Kin and six Rohingya women testified before the Argentina courts saying they had been victims of rape and torture. All of them were accepted as plaintiffs in the case, which is represented by human rights lawyer and current United Nations Human Rights Special Rapporteur in North Korea, Thomas Ohia Quintana. The Argentine justice system has attracted universal jurisdiction cases before, including one related to Francisco Franco's dictatorship in Spain. Philippines evacuated from home due to strong typhoon. Tens of thousands of people evacuated from coastal areas of the central and southern Philippines ahead of a strong typhoon. The Philippines Weather Bureau says Typhoon Ray, which has been upgraded to a Category 4 storm, the second highest classification, has wind speeds of 165 km per hour, with gusts of up to 205 km per hour. Residents from Cagayan de Oro City in the southern Philippines are evacuated by the Philippine Coastal Guard after incessant rains brought by Ray flooded the communities. On Mokabok Island in Bohol Province, residents are evacuated early in preparation of the typhoon's possible landfall later in the day. The Philippines, in an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands, sees around 20 tropical storms annually, which can cause floods and landslides. Authorities rescue trapped Filipinos from severe typhoon flood. Authorities says Typhoon Ray, one of strongest tropical storms to hit the Philippines this year after slamming into the southern and central parts of the Southeast Asian country with one death reported so far. Ray, which at one point intensified into a Category 5 storm, the highest classification, toppled power and communication lines, damaged homes and displaced hundreds of thousands of people as it barreled through the western portion of Visayas and mainland Palawan. Footage shared by the Philippine Coast Guard shows residents in Cagayan de Oro City in the southern Philippines being evacuated using makeshift floaters from their homes after heavy rains caused by the typhoon flooded low-lying areas. According to Tropical Storm Risk, Ray, which saw winds of up to 195 km per hour before hitting land, has been downgraded to a Category 3 storm. At least 12 deaths in a strong typhoon in the Philippines. The death toll from a typhoon that slammed into the Philippines rose to 12 and its president feared it could climb up further as authorities assess the devastation caused by one of the strongest tropical storms to hit the country this year. A video posted on social media shows destruction caused by the typhoon in Cebu City where strong winds have uprooted trees and severely damaged buildings and other structures. Most of the reported deaths were due to fallen trees and droning. Typhoon Ray, which saw winds of up to 195 km per hour before making landfall, displaced more than 300,000 people, damaged homes, and toppled power and communication lines, complicating the disaster response. Ray at one point intensified into a Category 5 storm, the highest classification. The country sees on average 20 typhoons a year. The typhoon, the 15th to strike the archipelago this year, saw dozens of flight cancels and paralyzed operations at several ports, leaving about 4,000 people stranded. Singapore will give more workers to return to the office starting next year. Authority says Singapore will allow to 50% of workers currently working from home to return to their offices from January 1st. Cases, while two are local cases. All the local cases were working at the airport. To date, work from home. To date, work from home has been the default arrangement. We recognize that this arrangement is not ideal and not sustainable in the long run as face-to-face -face interaction is important for team dynamics, as well as other operational considerations. Gam says the city-state has detected 16 Omicron cases so far, 14 were imported cases and 2 were local cases. Singapore, which has vaccinated 96% of its eligible population, reported 339 new coronavirus cases, the fewest since early September.
24 people killed in Osaka building fire. According to local police, at least 24 people were killed after a fire broke out in a building in Japanese city of Osaka. The fire erupted at around 10.20 in a medical clinic on the fourth floor of the eight-story building located near the GR Osaka station. The clinic provides psychosomatic and psychiatric treatments. According to police and fire departments, the victims suffered from carbon monoxide poisoning rather than burns. I heard the fire started from the elevator entrance and then crawled into the building, which left the people inside nowhere to escape. Because of the long and narrow space in that room, people might be forced to run backwards to somewhere deeper inside, and the ventilation in there should be bad. TV footage shows dozens of firefighters working inside and outside the narrow office building after the blaze was largely extinguished. The investigation into the cause of the fire is underway. And that's the wrap up. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a happy holiday.